welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Guys, today we're gonna work on this aquarium. This is Josh Sims tank. It's one of the aquascaping legend series setups at Green Aqua. One of the most viewed videos of our YouTube channel. It's almost at 500,000 views. It's incredible. The master from Malaysia, a double IAPSC winner, has set up this tank here. It's a wonderful tank. It's already three months old. It's a little bit overgrown. So this is what I'm gonna do today. Try to bring it back to the roots. Stay with us. Today is maintenance night at Green Aqua. You can see that Ozzy, our new maintenance colleague, is working on the 650 tank in the background. This is probably the most exciting times in aquascaping, at least for me personally. This is why I started aquascaping in the first place. Green tea, guys. Wonderful times. But what exactly do we have to do today? In order to show you exactly what my plans are, I need to go back to the studio and open Photoshop and start working on that, looking at the original pictures of the tank. Before we start working, I gotta check uh, the original Congo setup made by Mr. Josh Sim. Looking at this, I'm quite amazed how many details we have in. You can see that the path on the left side is going nicely. The path on the right side is not visible at the front, but it's visible afterwards. These are one, two, three, four, five, six different species of plants just in that big circle here. You can see that the big trunk has a very accentuated line from there and then you can see that we've got a very nice endpoint. There are some branches overhanging that endpoint, and those branches are covered with moss. So actually, what we have to do is to try to bring back all these details into our tank. Let's move on and see how this tank looked in the first week after the setup. Obviously, you can see on this picture that the plants are not very developed yet. You can see the nice wide path on the right side. You can see the path on the left side as well. There's a big empty spot here. I would love to see more branches in the background overhanging the space above the endpoint. You can see that he used a lot of Anubias and actually that Anubias has disappeared and you're going to see that in the next picture. Some Anubias tend to just melt. If we move on to the status of the tank today and you can see the difference, it has been really overgrown. This tank is three months old now and we struggled a lot with all kinds of staghorn algae and we had the cyanobacteria as well and we had some green algae as well. It was quite a big problem initially uh, with this tank. I think it was due to the fact that we introduced many, many ironwood types in the tank and the huge mass of hardscape has actually leached a lot of organic material in the tank and the filter couldn't cope with it. We're gonna try our best to make it look as similar as the master's original concept, but it's not gonna be the same. So let's go start working. Let me see what I have to do here. First of all, I'm gonna just get rid of all the uh, Yunkus repens in the foreground, and I'm just gonna reach into the tank. Did I say Yunkus repens at one point? If I'm saying Yunkus repens at any point, that's Potamogatungai. You can see that the Potamogatungai is a big mess. It's growing everywhere. So I'm gonna just get rid of this one, this one, this one. Guy has come forward here.
Okay, so if you look at the original picture, you can see that there's no wood on this spot. And later on, we added some more wood in here, which should actually disappear. Most importantly, we need to have the path back in there because those two paths and the endpoint in special are really needed. So let me show you what I'm talking about. In this picture, we also have a really wide background and there are no plants whatsoever in there. The endpoint is kind of getting freed up. So what you see here is a huge chunk of moss growing on the main central locations and also in the back there. I'm telling you guys, as nature prevails, you've got a really, really big mess everywhere in the tank. So what we have to do now is to tidy things up a little bit. Pinatifida is really too long. And there's Cyperus Helfer in the background, which is not visible at all. We're going to plant the cypress here and then have the tops overhanging like this. I said that I got to get rid of this big red spot of Pinotifida on the right side. So right now I'm working on that. Look at this. It's a huge mess. And in the center, we've got basically the same problem with the uh, Pinatifida growing everywhere. Actually, the roots of the Pinatifida is on the Anubia leaves. I was rude with the root. I got some Anubias from the fish room. So I'm going to start to introduce them in the foreground on the right side of the tank. So it's going to be quite nice. This has been growing. I've already got a very nice right side. You can see the graduation towards the back. You can see the uh, actual layers. As Josh has described, you have to have at least four or five layers in the tank. We have a lot of very nice Anubias here. The Bulbitis is not accentuated. I know that there's some Bulbitis at this point here, but I think you need a lot of bulbitis at this point here. Check this out. You can see that this big bulbitis is, uh, hangs over the branches and comes to the foreground. And you can also see the bulbitis there. That's going to give a lot of green, nice texture to this point. You can see it from there. I think the original scape, the Congo, was dominated by the bulbitis in a way that this plant has a really characteristic leaf structure and it was very visible so it gave you the jungle feeling don't be afraid to add new plants during your maintenance sessions during your big maintenance sessions so you can see that what i'm doing is this is what dave chow called plus and minus the idea of adding and removing the some plants at the same time 
And then at the end, I'm going to put this in between the rocks there at the bottom, just to have the leaves overhanging the uh, anubias. So I'm going to do the trimming of the parvula now. I would need the wave type scissors for that. We need to clean up the foreground. Obviously this tank needs a lot of trimming and tidying up. We need a lot of La Plata sand as well because we need to replace the La Plata sand in the background, elevate it a bit. All right, so this is the suction side hose for the water change and I'm gonna move into the right side here and I'm gonna start taking out all the plants with this hose along that little path when the plants start to grow, your main goal is to tidy up everything. And by that, I don't mean to make a symmetrical thing in the tank. It's just to try to reproduce the original concept and get rid of the mess caused by plants mixing up. Some degree of natural plant mixing is desired. So I'm going to leave some plants mixed, but some plants just overgrow each other and then they kind of work against your original concept. And that's when you should step up and do something about it. That way, thank you. See, I'm good with them. Actually, the moss has disappeared from these two roots. You don't have any moss covering these roots. We're gonna start gluing moss on the wood. So I'm gonna use the Seacam Reef Glue which is equally fine for planted tanks. Just the name is Reef Glue. I'm gonna start filling up the tank now and then draining it at the same time while trimming. We're gonna do a big water change as it is. I'm gonna wait just a little bit until this whole thing fills up completely and then I'm gonna start sucking some water out again and I'm gonna start doing the fine tuning on the trimmings. All right, so uh, actually, I think we're ready with the big bulk of the work. We're gonna fill it up with water now and check it out. Let's see what we did in the past three hours. Also, you will see all the gear and all the plants and all the fish that we used here in this tank in the description. It's too big. So let's see. So I think it's much better when it's green in the middle. There was too much red in it. I didn't like the fact that it was full with pinatifida everywhere. Oh. There's a pincet. <laughs> That's the end. Keep losing. <laughs> All right, I think it turned out quite well. I'm gonna send the picture to Josh. Picture, picture, picture. <laughs> I shouldn't speak when I'm tired.
right? When Josh is happy, then I'm happy. I'm gonna do some water changes tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, and in about a week, when you see this video posted, when the plants will start to recover nicely, you're gonna see the final images. And these are the final images. I hope that you guys liked this video. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up button and thumb thumb thumb. <laughs> and also, please do not forget to subscribe if you didn't do so yet. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.